bring this together. So you talk about medicine 3.0, which uh, yeah. like Dr. Atia also kind of mentions. Yeah. So yeah, let's let's talk a little bit about 3.0. And um, so how do you see medicine 3.0? And then, you know, what, well, let's say, yeah, what, what do you see uh, medicine 3.0 as being? I think of it as playing offense. Um, you know, we have, um, and I, it's just, it, P- Peter probably is the one who came up with 3.0. I've just heard so many people talk about it at this point. But uh, but to me, what it means is, uh, you know, instead of the last, you know, the last century of medicine has been good. We've really been able to treat a lot of diseases and extend lifespan quite a bit. But it's always been reactive. It's always been after the fact. We let things happen. And then, you know, we go to the doctor and ah, something's a little high. Well, you can go eat better, get some exercise and come back in a year. And that that is uh, medicine. Uh, that is the medicine that, uh, for the most part, still exists. Mm-hmm. To me, medicine 3.0 is about everything we've talked about. It is, first and foremost, it is about taking your health into your own hands um, and educating yourself on what's available and following data. So we've talked about the aura ring. There's one thing right there. That's medicine 3.0. That's part of medicine 3.0. There is continuous glucose monitoring. Again, a way of making sure that you're not headed towards uh, or, or that you're not triggering these glucose spikes getting labs periodically. I'll get my labs probably every six weeks or so following, um, you know, specific labs that, you know, like, uh, like lipids, um, making sure that I'm where, I'm where I want to be following my hemoglobin A1C and making sure that I'm targeting that, um, you know, five uh, under five for me, that's what I'd like to do. Um, liver function tests also, to give you an early indication of you, if you may have fatty liver or, you know, the, the start of some sort of metabolic syndrome. So then you've, so you've got labs. There's also uh, many other things that you can do. For example, cancer screening, uh, MRI, full body MRI. It's a big one. Gallery has a cancer test. You can do a cancer test. That... Now, the thing with cancer is interesting is that, Most cancers that are found early are treatable. The problem is we don't find all cancers early, right? Um, Everybody's got a story about pancreatic cancer in particular, right? Pancreatic cancer is the killer. You you hear about something with pancreatic cancer, you're like, and they were, you know, totally fine, got pancreatic cancer and died three months later. And the story behind that is not that there's something inherently more more virulent about a pancreatic cancer necessarily than, you know, than a, a, a other type of organ cancer. It's just that you don't find out that you have pancreatic cancer until very late in the game. It's not symptomatic. So if you can find, you know, stage one pancreatic cancers, they're very curable. And so another thing with full body MRI, um, picking up aneurysms. I mean, there's another reason you don't have to die. <laughs> you know, aneurysms are incredibly treatable. I used to, uh, you know, do neurosurgery and cerebrovascular neurosurgery. You'd see 35, 40 year old men, uh, totally healthy and comatose because they had a, um, uh, they, they, they were on a run and ended up you know, rupturing an aneurysm they didn't know they had, right? Completely avoidable deaths. Um, beyond that, now those are extremes, um, doing, uh, say for example, genetic testing of various types that you can get. Um, here's a, here's one that I think is, is an interesting example. I found out that I have a mutation that 30% of the population has in, in a gene called the MTHFR gene, um, the MTHFR gene, that mutation will result in an elevation of homocysteine. And that is associated with 
increased risk of cardiovascular disease, increased risk of Alzheimer's disease, so on and so forth. But here's the thing, is that all I have to do to remedy that dysfunction, that mutation, is by taking a methylated uh, B vitamin. I have eliminated that increased risk by simply taking one supplement. Again, that to me is medicine 3.0. So knowing what your labs are, knowing, you know, trying to catch things before they happen and also being aggressive about things. I mean, for me, I've, I've talked about, you know, how aggressive I am with my lipids because I refuse to die of cardiovascular disease. It's not something that I should die of, right? I mean, there's no reason I should die of it. And so I'm going to stay on top of that. So, so to me, that's what medicine 3.0 is. Right. So do you see us moving towards this at all? I mean, or do you think we're stuck in 2.0? What would be required to make this more systemic? I think it's uh, the, the problem, at least, uh, and I think it's going to be different by country, right? Um, yeah. But, yeah. but certainly in, in, the, in the United States, a uh, big limitation is going to be insurance, right? Mm -hmm. uh, like what will insurance cover and what will it not? Um I mean, I've I've uh, I've seen creative doctors who are are getting things uh, somewhat co you know covered for me on things, um, using various codes and that kind of thing. Because some of these things are quite expensive, like the mm. PCSK9 inhibitor, on uh, the Repatha that I'm on. It's quite expensive. Um, getting those types of things covered is is a real challenge. Um, mm. But uh, so so I do think though that. Um, I do think that as time goes by, I think there will be a um, a movement more and more towards, I, I think that just people in general are going to be monitoring their own health mm -hmm. uh, more deliberately. And that alone, I think, is going to, to uh, 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 you know, to make things different. I think that Medicine 3.0, when we talk about it, it's really more of a concept that individuals right now can embrace. It's not something that honestly, that in the foreseeable future, I can see the medical community necessarily coming grasping and insurance companies suddenly deciding they're okay paying for drugs as a prophylactic type thing. Although if they did the math, they probably would come out ahead. Right. If yeah. you could eliminate cardiovascular disease and you don't have to stent people anymore, you might be willing to, you know, be more aggressive in their in their pharmacological treatment. Are you stressed, having difficulty sleeping or commonly getting cramps? You might be missing out on a key mineral. Did you know many Americans are low in magnesium? This powerhouse mineral helps your body in over 300 ways, including calming your nerves, relaxing your muscles and helping you sleep better. Here are a few of the common signs of magnesium deficiency. Feeling on edge or easily annoyed, tossing and turning all night, getting muscle twitches or cramps. Your blood pressure is a little high, but not all magnesium supplements are created equal. That's why I'm taking Magnesium Breakthrough from Bioptimizers. It's the only full spectrum magnesium with the seven different forms that your body can benefit from. Are you ready? to feel calmer, sleep better, and ditch those cramps. Here's what to do. Head over to bioptimizers.com slash modern for a 10% discount with code MODERN10. For a limited time, you can get free travel-sized bottles of Magnesium Breakthrough with your purchase. And it comes with a 365-day money-back guarantee. So is there is there anything else that... I that, that we that you would like to cover no I mean I think if you if you'd like to we can talk about um we can talk about supplements oh yeah yeah well that's that's a good point actually what supplements yeah. do you think are effective so in terms of longevity again um so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna um, do this with drugs and supplements because effectively they're the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, the way I separate them is um, again, by looking at what, what kills you and then 
coming back to longevity pathways. The first and foremost, in cardiovascular disease. So mm. in that case, there's three things that uh, I'm I'm on, and two of them are prescription. So it's not going to be helpful to many people. But one is a PCSK9 inhibitor called Repatha. Another is uh, uh, Livolo, which is a type of statin, uh, and then a daily uh, daily uh, aspirin. So that that is my cardiac. Uh, that is how I'm avoiding cardiac death. How much? Uh, What's the aspirin dose? Yeah, I actually just take a baby aspirin, an 81 like, milligram. 81 uh, milligrams. Yeah, right. enteric coated aspirin. That's all I take. Right. In terms of um, brain health, um, what I do is, um, is I take some fish oil for the DHA, mm. EPA. Um, Cocoa flavonoids seem to have some pretty good data. So Cocovia, uh, curcumin. Mm hmm. Um, Magnesium is a big one. Uh, Magteen is uh, typically the one that uh, is recommended because of its ability to get through the blood brain barrier. Uh, and then, you know, maybe uh, the, the last one is really important, but it's going to be variable whether you need it is vitamin D. Most people are somewhat vitamin D deficient, and it is something that is really important. So that's, that's what I will do for brain health. Um, and then I focus in on longevity pathways. And this is, you know, this is sort of a curious uh, thing because I think most of it, most of this is very theoretical. Um, mm -hmm. what, what I try to think about is how am I going to, how am I going to uh, stimulate each one of these pathways, whether that be the sirtuin pathways or M, uh, down-regulating mTOR or you know, like the, the uh, AMPK kinase uh, pathways, that kind of thing. So rapamycin, uh, I pulse rapamycin. Mm -hmm. um, that is, uh, in my mind, there's no other medication with as much data in longevity across multiple species as rapamycin. So I do pulse rapamycin once a week. Um, I do take NMN, although I will say that this is an area that I think probably has more questions mm. than anything else. Um, I think in, in other, in, in, in various studies, uh, you know, getting that those NAD levels up does appear to, to help with longevity, but I don't think it's as clear uh, as, as, as people make it, but do I, so I do take an NM, NMN, mm. like a gram a day. And I will say this is, it's always pretty remarkable to me to see people taking NMN, but not taking rapamycin because rapamycin is, 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 is clearly the winner when it comes to, uh, mm. the, the actual data on this. Um, I started taking taurine because of the, a recent study of <laughs> taurine, mm -hmm. uh, and not drinking the Red Bull instead, right? But yeah. uh, so taurine, uh, then this, you know, senolytic pathways, um, quercetin, physotin, and spermidine, uh, those. And um, one other thing that I think is useful because I, 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 and just in general, I think would be maybe useful for your audience is this, is that um, one big question a lot of people have is, you know, where do I get the supplements, right? How do I know what supplement to get? And uh, this is a really tough one, actually. And, and, and but and and I have nothing to do with this company, called, uh, but it's a consumerlab.com. I have found this to be a really good resource. Um, they do very pretty rigorous uh, uh, comparisons of these brands, talk about how much actual ingredient there is, uh, absorbability, all sorts of things. Most of the, most of the supplements that we've talked about are covered there. Um, it's, uh, there is a, there is a cost to it. it it's not terribly expensive. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, I, I use that whenever I'm, I'm considering adding, uh, various types. And there's also some dosage information on there too. If, if, you know, if people need some guidance on that as well. So, Interesting. So fisetin, in terms of senolytics, do you pulse your fisetin or like, or, or do you take it every day? 
I, I take it every day. I take it every day. Right. And the most, the mo- most of the reason for the, the pulsing and the rapamycin really has to do with, you know, the issues with, you know, there, there's sort of a, we won't need to get into that too much, but there's sort of a double edged sword uh, around the whole mTOR pathway that mm-hmm. you're trying to avoid. So. Yes. Uh, y- yeah. Like, yeah. Anyway, that, that, right. that's rapamycin. Yeah. Rapamycin. Right. The thing is rapamycin is a drug. It, it, you still, it's still a little harder to get hold of than it is. It is. Yeah, that others. that's true. It's, it's hard. But the thing about it is that um, at least in, in the U S uh, if you, if you can find somebody, uh, if you find a doctor who's interested in longevity, it's, it's in, even if insurance doesn't cover it, it's dirt cheap because it's been around for so long. Uh, mm. it, it's really an inexpensive drug, but yeah, that is a, that is a challenge for, for a lot of people. All right. Yeah. Okay. Dr. Joffrey, thank you so much for joining yes. us today. Uh, where can people uh, download the book and find out more about yourself? Sure. Well, um, the, uh, probably the, the podcast, uh, you know, is where I talk about all of these mm-hmm. things. Uh, and that's uh, Sapio with Buck Joffrey. And that, that, that is basically, you know, you can find that anywhere, whether it be YouTube or, or pretty much any, uh, any place where you download podcasts. The book, as I mentioned, is essentially a draft right now. So I have not actually published it, but it, it is up on the website. And I am actually currently continuously, uh, you know, adding to it. Um, and that's at sapiopodcast.com. And, you know, it's, uh, yeah, I would encourage people just to download it and read it because again, there's just so many, as we've talked about so many low hanging fruit, uh, in the book, I don't even get into supplements, right? We just talk about really simple things that people can do in their lives. Uh, small movements that, that, that could really increase longevity and, and health span. Yeah, it is the Pareto principle. You can you can get a lot, like eighty percent by really doing twenty percent of the work. I think that's right. And if you think about you know, sometimes I think about uh, uh, you know Brian Johnson, and I think in fifteen years, uh, you, you know, if there's a, it's a a true cure for aging, I I think some of us are going to get the last laugh on that <laughs> one because we <laughs> we. <laughs> Because we we ate the meals we wanted to and and <laughs> lived a little bit uh, more enjoyable existence. So, yes, yeah, it, it kind of it doesn't seem doesn't seem worth it if if it takes that much effort. No, no, you've got there's got to be a reason, uh, and you've got to enjoy your life. And so, you know, for me, um, the, the beauty of most most of what what I'm talking about is there are they're pretty easy to implement. Even in, and I don't know if you yourself are doing time restricted feeding, but you know if you think about an eight hour window, uh, if if you just have lunch, uh, if you skip breakfast, you've got an eight, essentially you're doing an eight hour window. It's just eliminating snacks, right? Uh, yeah. It's not that hard to do. It's it's really quite easy. And and uh, what I found in even with uh, reducing some of uh, you know my blood sugar and things with a little bit of a uh, few hacks here and there, you know, trying to make sure I get any sort of green leafy vegetables in before any other carbs. You know, one of the things that you look at when you're going to dinner and the first thing they do is they put a big thing of bread out in front of you. That's exactly when you don't want to eat the bread, but you got to know that, right? Somebody has to tell you that. And yeah. these are simple concepts that can, you know, bring down your hemoglobin A1C. And, and again, those compounded effects mm-hmm. over time can add years to your life so yeah okay so uh thank you so much for joining us today yes thanks for having me 